having me. I'm Molly, like he just said. And I consider myself the founder of a feminist clean beauty startup, and you might be wondering what that is, and we can get into that a little later. But I'm here to talk about Generation Z and selling to them. Um, we have customers of all ages, but I built our brand around Generation Z because the future of buying is changing dr dramatically in the next 10 years. So they were born between 95, 2010. We're going to learn about um, how to sell to them, uh, how they consume differently, um, how politics and diversity kind of are going to play into this. And it's important because they make up 40% of consumers, believe it or not, and they contribute $44 billion to the U.S. economy. So for them, consumption is a means of self-expression. And so individual identity is really important to them. They don't like labels, they don't wanna be put in a box. And if they say, if they buy something from an ethical company, well then that means that they're ethical too. Um, and this is opposed to buying or wearing things to fit into the norms of groups. So I don't know about you, but in the 90s and 2000s, I was walking around covered head, head to toe in um, logos. It's not like that today. <laughs> they buy to represent um, larger causes and things that they care about. So the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is ethics and taking a stand, and this is an example from my own company's branding, us taking a stand. I'm a, I have a beauty company, but we are for everyone, and we don't beauty shame anyone. We don't use terms like anti-aging, and this is important because 70% of Gen Z want to buy from ethical companies, 65% want to know where it's made, who made it, where, where it was made, how it was made, 79% are against photoshopped images. So it's better to pick a specific cause or topic rather than a broad swath of things and then have something really relevant to say about that um, because 67% think being value-based is cool and that's different from when I was coming up. Um, now I'm going to talk about authenticity. So they see right through empty platitudes and if a brand is doing something quote unquote ethical um, just for PR brownie points, they can see right through it and you're going to look like crap in their eyes and they're going to tweet about you all over the internet. Um, for example, if a brand talks about diversity but doesn't have a diverse workforce, they're going to notice and they'll call you out on it. And the preoccupation with authenticity has led them away from celebrities as endorsers to influencers, which leads us to our next point. They don't want to be sold to. They want to be a part of your brand. They don't want to just join your journey, but they want to bring you along on theirs. And this is perfect for user-generated content. I mean, 20 years ago, you couldn't access a brand. Now, someone can take a beautiful photo of my products and I can, you know, regram it, and then it helps both of us. And so that's gonna be a big part of, you know, the next few years. They're YouTube stars, documentarians, their own personal creative and media teams. So taking advantage of that is helpful for both them and the brand. And they're more likely to engage with you if you're human. Uh, that's the authenticity thing again. This is a picture of me literally putting labels on jars. And I like to show this stuff to my audience because they don't identify with the brand. They identify with the story and the people behind the brand. Like I, I share some pretty raw things about myself with my audience and I get happy mail every day from people for that. And then um, you'll have to be honest when you screw up. Honesty is so important to this generation that McKinsey and company has called them the true generation. So it also means that you have to step up your customer service as others have talked about, but it means that if you do something wrong, you just have to admit to it. And then this brings us to uh, a fun point about politics, yay, uh, and diversity and how that's gonna merge with business over the next several years because this is the most diverse generation that the entire world has ever seen. Not surprisingly, so inclusion is very important, and this includes the body positivity movement, which has gained so much steam on Instagram over the last few years, and anti-beauty shaming. It also includes embracing non-binary and trans folks, because a third of Gen Zers know somebody that uses gender-neutral pronouns, and I'm surprised that it's not higher than that, actually. And then the biggie, on the whole, they are the most liberal generation we've ever seen. The ones on the right are really far to the right, but generally they're liberal and their number one issue is climate change. They are passionate about climate change, sustainability is top of mind, they're going to ask questions about that, and so there needs to be some sort of a plan 
um, for that. And so these are the main points that I just talked about. Um, on the last slide, I'm going to have a website where you can go and get all of my notes, sub, sub points, uh, my research, my statistics, and my sources because this is a lot to talk about in six minutes and 20 seconds. So before I wrap some quick examples in real life, this is uh, my company and how we take a stand. Uh, uh, again, we're known for being anti-beauty shaming. We are not going to use your insecurities to sell you products. Um, we're not selling you things to fix you because you don't need to be fixed. We have very diverse models in our marketing and, and it's worked really well for us. The next, next example is Fenty Beauty. Um, and that's owned by Rihanna for people who don't know. And it's embarrassing to say that until 2017, um, there was not a beauty company that had just as many shades of foundation for women of color as they do for white women. They were the first and now others are replicating. And the final example is from a company that was supposed to be here today but they couldn't make it and that's Tomboy X. They make underwear for everybody and if you Google them, their meta tag literally says, be fierce, be authentically you. And I love that. It's very Gen Z. Um, and not surprisingly, they're blowing up. So that's what I've got. Um, please visit from mollywithlove.com slash springboard and you'll get all of the sources. Um, this is my contact information. Follow me on the internet, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks for having me.